So for this practical, we actually talked about oxidation reduction reaction, which in short is given as redox titration. Now I told you that in titration, the only thing we are looking for is the number of moles of this that react with the number of moles of this. Now another thing that you also need to know is that for this titration, eh, potassium permanganate that was used for this redox titration is a secondary standard. Potassium permanganate is a what? A secondary standard. Are you getting it? It's a secondary standard. And because it's a secondary standard, it actually requires oxalic acid. Oxalic acid is a primary standard, according to what I told you. That when you are given a secondary standard, what do you normally use? You use a primary standard to standardize it, right? So it means potassium permanganate, we need oxalic acid to standardize it. However, for this particular one and every other one that you will be given, most times they already give you the factor. You see that they will give you the factor or they will just tell you to solve like that without the standardizing. So in this case now, it means they already know the exact concentration of what? KMNO4. Which means KMNO4 in this particular question they give to you is acting as a primary what? standard are you getting it why because the exact concentration is known so it is acting as a primary standard so you don't need to standardize it with oxalic acid anymore but in case when you see anything like oxalic acid whatsoever then you have to standardize it you can see it in your um, uh, what is it called in your practical manual so i will just go straight and answer this exam question if any question wants to come and under this i believe something like this exactly is what they will say farmchem doesn't change question that much all right so for this particular one the first question here says define um the first question here says define the term oxidation and reduction with example now if you want to define the term oxidation and reduction with example what did we say oxidation is now we said oxidation reaction is a reaction that involves one gain of what electrons right or what loss of hydrogen right or addition of what oxygen are you getting it addition of oxygen or you can define oxidation in terms of what? Removal of electronegative elements. Are you getting it now? So when you are asked to define oxidation reaction, you say oxidation reaction is a reaction that involves the gain of electron, which you can also say, uh, I say gain of electrons, loss of electrons. Oxidation is loss of electrons. Are you getting it? Loss of uh, hydrogen, addition of oxygen, removal of electronegative atom, or you can actually say oxidation is an increase in oxidation number in the positive direction, an increase in oxidation number. Is that okay? An increase in oxidation number. So these are the various terms you can use to define oxidation reaction. Is that fine? Now, example of an oxidation reaction is something like this. You have tin 2. Now, if this tin 2 undergoes the reaction, some kind of reaction, it will give what? Tin 4 plus, plus what? 2E electrons. Are you getting it? Now, this one means electrons has been what? Giving off loss. Whenever you see the electron at the product side, it means electron is what? Giving off. Or you can say loss of electron. And that reaction is said to be an oxidation reaction. Is that okay? So this is one example that you can actually give. Another example of oxidation reaction is something like this. Fe2+. Fe2 plus means what? Ion 2+. plus. Ion 2 plus can be oxidized using an oxidizing agent to give us what? Ion 3 plus plus what? One electron. This kind of reaction 
you say it's a what an oxidizing reaction is that okay now examples of oxidizing agents because you may now they may not give you give examples of oxidizing agent examples of oxidizing agent include uh ki o3 we have km no4 you see most of those elements are uh, compound that have oxygen in them they are oxidizing agent because they add oxygen to reaction what other one again do you think we have h2o2 the oxidizing agent are you getting it then also we have um k2 cro2 o7 this is an oxidizing agent even chlorine is an oxidizing agent and also we have um yes this particular one i want to remember hno3 is an oxidizing agent so you may be asked to give examples of oxidizing agent please this is what you are expected to do so this is an example of what an oxidation reaction are you getting it now now you can also use these examples to form reduction because when you talk about reduction reduction means what reduction means the gain of electrons you know oxidation means what loss of electron so reduction means gain of electron then you can also have it as addition of hydrogen you can also have it as addition of electronegative atom You can also have it as what well, loss of oxygen. So oxidation is uh, reduction is defined using the following terminologies. Is that okay? Now, same reaction we've written before. You can also write them to illustrate reduction reaction. For instance, when you have SN4 plus plus 2E negative to give us SE2 plus, this is called what? A reduction reaction why because the oxidation number changes from what we have here to this are you getting it so we say that that reduction reaction is a reduction reaction all right so this is a reduction reaction now also we have fe3 plus plus e minus to give us um fe2 plus this is also a reduction reaction. Now, examples of reducing agent. You have ferrous sulfates. These are reducing agents. Example. Then, peroxide also is oxidizing and also what? Reducing. Then, potassium iodide, which is Ki, is highly reducing. Sodium nitrite, oxalic acid, and amalgamated zinc. Amalgamated zinc is something like this. Zinc with mercury is what we call amalgamated, amalgamated zinc, rather. Is that okay? So that is the first question you need to actually answer here. You may need to list everything as much as you can, but that does not necessarily mean you get the complete mark. You may get the complete mark. All right? Now, we have the question. A, a is a solution of 0.02 molar potassium permanganate contained in burette b is a solution of ferrous sulfate heptahydrate containing 0.5 gram in 25 ml of water acidified with one molar h2so4 in a conical flux titrate b with a to a pink endpoint now the only two things you are actually titrating is Potassium permanganate, which is A, and what? This ferric sulfate, heptahydrate. So you must get their mole ratio in order for you to calculate anything you need to calculate. Is that okay? So, now, so the reaction is between KMNO4 and this. Now, what is the equation of reaction? That is the first thing you need to do. All you need to do is to come here and start writing the equation of reaction. Now, you must be very, very careful. And you must memorize this thing. This is ferric sulfate. This is a redox reaction. 
heptahydrate or let's just say ferric sulfate plus you react it with um or firstly let's write kmno4 two modes of kmno4 react with 10 mole of ferric sulfate plus 8 mole of h2so4 the two major things reacting are kmno4 and what this the reason we use h2so4 is for that h2so4 will bring proton which will acidify the solution if you know how to balance redox reaction you will agree with me that we say redox reaction they usually use positive charges to balance them up right so this we give the desired product the product will be magnesium sulfate which is something like this 2 m n so4 plus what plus 5 ferric um sulfate then plus 8 h2o i don't want to go further or oh, let me just take it this way plus what h i mean 8 h2o all right this is your equation of reaction now this equation of reaction everybody should memorize it but the only two things that you are just um you should note is this one and this one so from here now you can now say that two mole of kmno for react with 10 mole of ferric sulfates so you say two mole we want to calculate milli equivalent from what we've been doing since 10 uh, two mole of kmno4 react with how many moles of the uh, ferrous sulfate 10 mole of what ferrous sulfate now even if you cannot remember this full reaction just know that two mole of kmno4 react with how many mole of ferrous sulfate 10 moles of ferrous sulfate are you getting it now all right but the ferrous sulfate that was used was actually the heptahydrate form of it but we are going to still use the this thing to solve now now if you look at your question two mole of kmlo forgive 10 moles of ferrous sulfate but you are actually using ferrous sulfate to um you are using kmlo for to assay for ferrous sulfate so you can say you interchange by saying 10 ferrous sulfate are you getting it but the ferrous sulfate that was given to you was the heptahydrate so you are going to use ferrous sulfate heptahydrate to give two mole of kmlo4 look at it it was given in the question so that you will not confuse yourself he said a is a solution of potassium permanganate contained in a burette b is a solution of ferrous sulfate heptahydrate but whichever case you do two mole of this potassium permanganate usually react with 10 moles of what anything you have here right now you are now going to come here if 10 mole react with this according to what we said what was the amount of kmno4 that was used for this titration 0.02 mole kmno4 right so it means that the concentration of our kmno4 that we need to calculate our milli equivalent is 0.02 molar now two mole according to what we have known earlier we say our number of mole is molarity times what volume it is easier to get from two mole to 0.02 as opposed to one mole so our n will be what two mole times the volume here will be what one liter mm? Mm. so that n will be equals to two mole times what one liter is 1000 milliliter by now you should have known how to calculate your milli equivalent because we know the number of moles for kmno4 here is how many mole two mole so two molar solution times one will give us the two moles you have here are you getting it now so that at the end of the day this gives us 10 times now this ferrous sulfate you have here what was the mass of the ferrous sulfate that was given in the question we look at it very well the mass of ferrous sulfate was 278.02 gram right so you can say 10 times the total mass of this is 
seven eight point what zero two gram of F E S O four seven H two O should be present in two moles of KMLO four, which we can write as what two molar solution of one thousand milliliter. Right? Good. Now what do we do? Divide both sides by what? To get we use 0 0.02 molar solution of KMLO4. You know this OT we have here is of KMLO4. True or false? This OT is of what? KMLO4. So we have to break this 2 molar solution we have here to 0 0.02 mole. How do we do that? We divide by what? 100. 100. So if you divide here by 100, it means you also divide here by 100. In such a way, that this cancel this, this cancel this, it give you 27 point, this cancel this, is going to give us, if you do your calculation very well, this is going to give us 27.802 gram of Fe so 4 7 h 20 to give us what? Divide this and this, it's going to give us 0. Yeah. 0 0.02 molar of 1000 1, milliliter of what? KMNO4. To get the milli equivalent, what do we do? Divide here by what? 1000, right? So, if you divide here by 1000, this cancel this. What do you think that is going to give to us? 0. 0.02. 0. 0. what? 0.02. 7 gram of what? Fe SO4 H2O will be present in 0 0.02 molar. This is um, 1 mil of KMNO4. So Alright, so this is 0 0.0278 which is 802 gram of this react with 0 0.02 molar 1 mil of KMNO4. Now, there is something we need to do here. Be very careful because one of the questions say we should calculate for only the mass of ion 2 that reacted. Now, to get the mass of ion 2 that reacted, this is simple mathematics that you need to do. But I will show it to you in the simple form and I will also show it to you just in the quick form that you need to uh, go about it. By by virtue of what you know, by stoichiometry. Now you agree with me. What is the amount of ion here? I, ion here is Fe, right? Mm -hmm. Now the molar mass of ion is what fifty five point eight four five. Are you getting it now? Mm -hmm. So theoretically, fifty five point eight four five, which is the atomic mass of ion, fifty five point eight four five gram of ion. Is present in the total mass of this is how many in 278.02 gram of what iron sulfate h2o do you understand it's more like you take a particular percentage from here let's say the iron we, we are looking for only the iron that is actually present there so you can say the atomic mass of iron generally is what? 55.845 gram of iron is present in what? The total mass of iron here is what? 278.02 of iron of this uh, entire sheet here. Now, what we are actually looking for is the amount of only iron that is present in this entire this thing. So, if 55.845 by stoichiometry normally is present in 278.02 gram of this, Therefore, can't we say that 0 0.0278 gram, 0 0.02 gram, which is the milli equivalent we have of iron sulfate heptahydrate would be equals to what? X, right? We can say that to get the amount of only iron present. True or false? True. So this will be cross multiply and this will now give us x is equal to what is equal to 
um or you can say x times 278.02 is equals to 55.845 times 0 0.027802 gram of only ion 2 which is of only ion that is present now to get the amount of only ion present you divide by what 278.02 divide by what 278.02 when you do that what is your answer 0. 0.005584 gram of what ion 2 are you getting it now so in this milli equivalent now this value you have here this value you have here is the milli equivalent for what the entire ion sulfate solution are you getting it now this entire thing here is the milli equivalent for the entire ion sulfate solution but if you are now looking for the milli equivalent for only the ion to now be this amount are you getting it now so we can now say for only the ion you have 0 0.0055 Eight four gram of ion two plus, which is the ion present there, eh, is we give you zero. We react with zero point two or zero point zero two molar, which is what you have here, of one mil of what KMNO four. True or false? True. You understand now so this is our second milli equivalent for only ion alone now the interpretation of this is that 0 0.005584 gram of ion we react with one mil of what kmlo4 do you understand that so if they give you a particular mil of kmlo4 now from the titration you'll be able to calculate the amount of ion that will react with that right by just doing cross multiplying now let us go back to our table our table of values here um tit uh, titration table you have kmlo4 is this now this titration does not need indicator does not need indicator why because kmlo4 is purple are you getting it kmlo4 is purple so listen as you put KMLO4 with the, let's say this KMLO4 here, KMLO4, it is purple color. What you have here is the iron sulfate heptahydrate. Now, as you put KMLO4, listen on, let me look for a purple color. This purple, right? Something like this, okay? Let's go with this. Now, as you put KMLO4 from here, as KMLO4 is entering to this solution, this ion sulfate will be consuming it to become what? Colorless. So, each KMLO4 that is entry, this ion sulfate will consume it and it becomes what? Colorless. But if there are no more ion sulfates present here, that means if all the KMLO4 has completely neutralized ion sulfate, what are you now going to see? Each KMLO4 that you add will not be visible because no more ion sulfate that is consuming it. Are you getting it now? So in a situation where you now see a purple color that is standing after some time, you now know that you've reached your what? End point. Do you understand? So for this titration, you don't need what? Indicator because it will give you that pinkish, you know, when uh, purple gets into water, it gives you this uh, pinkish color, something like this. Are you getting it? It gives the pinkish color. So what you'll be seeing in the solution is this pinkish color that remains on standing even after five minutes. By that time, you know that all the iron sulfate, which was supposed to be consuming the KMLO4 that you are putting, has completely reacted. Hence, you freeze your what end point. Is that okay? So what is our titer value? The titer value from this experiment, average titer, will be equals to what? the volume used here 12.50 plus what 12.80 divided by how many two when you do this calculation what is that going to give to you you have 12.50 plus 12.80 12 
divide by 2 which is equals to 12.65 mil of KMLO4 reacted with the what the ion sulfate so it means 12.65 mil of KMLO4 reacted with the ion sulfate and that is your title value so you come here and now say listen no listen you are now going to say our calculated weight for KML, uh, for ion sulfate would be equal to what our milli equivalent abi normal way we used to do it now abi times what tighter value times what the factor now listen this experiment on its own is supposed to have a factor but because the exact concentration of KMLO4 has been given which was 0.05 molar it means we don't need to find the factor however if a factor is given to you in the exam tomorrow let's say this question comes out and the factor is given to you you must multiply with the factor but since if they give you in this format it means no factor is needed are you getting it now it means you'll be having how many mole here yeah? one the factor will be one is that okay so that at the end of the day what will be our calculated weight milli equivalent for the ion sulfate is what the milli equivalent is 0, 0.0 for the ion sulfate heptahydrate is 0 0.02780 so you come here and say 0 0.02780 times the title value is what 12.65 title value let me write it here title value is 12.65 mil please remember to put your units but don't put it here times factor which is one everything in gram so what do you think would be your calculated weight now 0 0.35 all right so 0 0.35 or 0. Point, okay 0 0.35 that is very correct 0 0.3516 gram which is approximately 0 0.35 gram so this is the calculated weight of what of the ferrous sulfate what heptahydrate is that okay heptahydrate so this is the amount of ferrous sulfate that is present now what was the initial amount that was given from this question what was the initial amount of ferrous sulfate given in this question 0. Point what five are you getting it now 0 0.5 gram now i just gave i just used that particular values it does not mean it's actually very correct i just used that title value are you getting it now you are going to do your own experiment and then you are going to get the title value for your own so 0 0.5 gram was actually given determine the theoretical volume for the 0 0.25 gram of sample all right so that is that comment on your result so they say determine the theoretical volume for the 0 0.25 gram of sample. Now, you can come here. 0 0.5 gram is present in what? 25 mil. True or false? So, you can come here and say, from that question, 0 0.25 gram, 0 0.25 gram, or 0 0.5 gram from what was given, is present in how many mil? 25 mil. True or false? Huh? Mm. From the question. So it's present in 25 mil. Therefore, 0 0.25 gram, what do you think would be the theoretical volume for this? To be equal to what? X. Right? We should be cross multiply this. We should be 0 0.5 times X is equal to 0 0.25 times what 25 mil right now note that we are not using the 0 0.35 what we are using was what was given in the question look at it here they said determine the theoretical volume for the 0 0.25 gram of sample are you getting it now so if 0 0.5 gram is present in 25 mil of water the 0 0.25 gram will be present in what x are you getting it now where if you cross multiply this is going to give you this 
Now divide both sides by 0 0.5. 0 0.5. This cancel this. And um, what are we going to have? X will be equal to what? 0 0.25 times 25 divided by 0 0.5. What is that going to give to us? Twelve point five mil. So twelve point five mil will be the theoretical volume for zero point two five gram of sample. Now the question says, calculate the what? The theoretical, I mean the percentage purity, Abi, of sample. Now percentage purity. What was the initial? This will give you zero point five gram, Abi. So you come here and say percentage purity. What is the formula for percentage purity from what we learned? Percentage purity is equals to what calculated with all over what expected with don't go and write cw and that to make sure you write it at times 100 percent so calculated weight was what 0 0.35 gram b see the calculated weight we are talking about here this was what we got from our calculation this here is what we call the calculated weight is that okay now, what was the expected weight? How many grams did you put in the 25 mil that you titrated with? 0 0.5 gram. So, our expected weight is supposed to be what? 0 0.5 gram times 100%. What is the percentage purity? Eh? 70% weight by what? Weight. Alright? 70% weight by weight. You've gotten our percentage purity as what? 70% weight by Wait, right? The next thing we now need to get is what um and percentage weight by weight of the ferrous ion. Are you getting it? Percentage weight by weight of the word ferrous ion. Now to calculate the percentage weight by weight of the ferrous ion, we need to be very, very careful. Now listen, how many gram of this was actually given initially? 0 0.5 gram. Mm. Abi, now this is what you are now going to do. It's going to be straightforward, but it's going to be complicated too. Now, listen. What was our milli equivalent for ferrous ion? What was the milli equivalent? 0 0.005584 gram. Are you getting it now? React with 1 mil of KMLO4. So, you can write that 0 0.005584 if I can still remember that. So, come here and say 0 0.005584 Abi gram of ferrous ion react with how many mil? 1 mil KMNO4 what was our title value for KMNO4? 16 point what? title value for KMNO4 what was it? KMLO for normally, normally, not without the data value normally was 12.65 now. Uh -huh. That's what I'm asking of. Are you getting it now? So title value is 12.65 mil of KMLO for we react with how many mil of the ion now? X. Abi? So cross multiply. This multiply by this. Our x will be equal to 0 0.005584 times 12.65. What did it give to you? 0 0.0706. 0.0706. 0, 0 0.0706. Which is what? In gram. Are you getting it now? So this is the amount of what? Ion. Ferrous ion in the experiment. Now, but we are giving zero initially. What was the amount of ferrous ion? What was the amount in um, initially? They you are giving zero point five gram, right? Of what? Of the ferrous surface. Are you getting it now? Zero point five gram initially from your uh, value of the ferrous surface. What? Heptahydrate. True or false? Now. From what we did the other time, you are going to do that again. So theoretically, theoretically, what are you expected to get from 0 0.5 gram? How many gram of iron are you expected to get from 0 0.5 gram of this? 
that's what we are going to do so theoretically what do you say the other time 55.845 gram of iron is present in what 278 point what zero two abi gram of iron sulfate heptahydrate true or false therefore 0 0.5 gram we contain what x to get the amount of iron here yeah. i'm um, sorry 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 it's supposed to be 0 0.5 gram of this will be equals to what x to get the amount of iron present in this 0 0.5 gram since we've already got to the one that is gotten from the word experiment now what do you think that is going to give us x times what 278.02 is equals to 55.845 times 0 0.2 divide both side by 278.02 divide both side by 278.02 of what ion 2 plus so calculate for me what is that going to give to you you're going to give us 0 0.100 gram of what ion 2 plus now what that signifies is that for this 0 0.5 gram of ion we have 0 0.100 gram of what ion 2 plus are you getting it why this was what you got from the word experiment so what do you think is the percentage purity for ion 2 plus now weight by weight percentage purity according to what we said is always what calculated with all over what expected with times what 100 percent abby calculated weight is what Calculated weight is the amount we got here, which is 0 point from the practical, 0 0.0706, all over, expected weight is 0 0.1, times 100%, weight by weight. What do you get at the end of the day? What did you get? 70.6%. Are you getting it now? Which is almost equivalent to that of iron sulfate. So that is the percentage purity. We've successfully done that. Now the next part of the question says, why is that? Why is it that the solution cannot be acidified with ACL or HNO3? Now ACL will react with the reactant KMnO4 to form what chlorine. ACL on itself is an oxidizing agent. KMnO4 is an oxidizing what? agent are you getting it now this chlorine is an oxidizing agent so definitely at the end of the day it will affect the reactivity of KMnO4 which is supposed to act as the sole oxidizing agent in the reaction if you also use HNO3 if you look at the list of oxidizing agent I gave HNO3 is one oxidizing agent so HNO3 is an oxidizing agent if you use it to it will interfere with the activities of what KMnO4 therefore giving an alteration in what you get as your final answer is that okay? So that is basically everything you need to know about um, radius titration. Thank you very much for your time. We'll see you in the next one.